It's official, Sony has closed Fireworks Studios and Concord, the ambitious live service game that was supposed to break new grounds. It's now permanently offline. This decision also impacted Neon Koi, which was working on a mobile action game. It's actually quite shocking, especially considering a strong pre-launch confidence expressed by Sony's top executives and the substantial investment in Concord. Let's take a look at what exactly has happened and why this move is both surprising and perhaps even inevitable. And what this actually could even mean with the Sony's future strategy. When Sony first acquired Firewalk Studios in 2023, oh, just to think about that, it came at a high, somewhat of a high hopes and ambition statements, right? Herman Holtz, head of the PlayStation Studios, mentioned an innovative approach to connected storytelling, something fans were curious about but eventually disappointed with. This storytelling boiled down to weekly three minutes cutscenes, far from the impactful narrative driven experience players had hoped for. Similarly, Jim Ryan, CEO at, of Sony at the time, was confident that Fireworks live service capabilities would broaden Sony's reach and the appeal. This confidence was echoed when Sony decided to acquire the studio outright before Concord even launched. It was a major investment that, unfortunately, never paid off. Rumors suggested that Concord had a development cost of around $400 million. To put that by you know perspective, this budget was greater than even Spider-Man 2, one of the PlayStation's most anticipated and successful games. Sony's ambitions for Concord didn't stop there. They secured a promotional episode on Amazon's Secret Level series, hoping this extra visibility would help launch Concord as a flagship PlayStation property with potential on par to what they say Star Wars. <laughs> it seems like they envisioned this game as the future of PlayStation, even though it hadn't even entered the marketplace. But Concord didn't just fail to meet those lofty expectations, it was outright disaster. Within two weeks of release, Concord has sold only around 30,000 copies. Players' retention was so low that Sony decided to issue refunds and took the game offline almost immediately. In the competitive PvP first-person shooter genre, the game simply couldn't capture a sustainable audience. Sony tried to position Concord as a game with unique storytelling mechanics and fresh multiplayer ideas. But this vision clashed with the marketplace already oversaturated with live service games, hero shooters many of which had been refined over the years of updates and player feedback. The genre's top competitors continuously innovate, and Concord was underwhelming, leading to its swift decline. Firewalk Studios now joins the rank of talented developers shut down due to the leadership's missteps and a misguided corporate strategy. This isn't the first time Sony has aggressively pushed for live service games, but the result has consistently been disappointing. Despite considerable investment, we've yet to see a successful live service game from PlayStation Studios. And it's not just the studios that suffer, it's also players who were promised unique, engaging, long-lasting titles. This strategy seems to have cost Sony half a generation's worth of development potential, with resources poured into live service experiments that never resonate with fans. Sony's broader focus on live service and mobile games has also had a consequences for Neon Koi, the studio behind the mobile action game now cancelled. Sony says mobile games remain a priority, but stress that future mobile games need to meet the PlayStation Studios pedigree. For now, this attempt has cost yet another studio its future and its team members their jobs. Although Holtz expressed gratitude to both Firewalk and Neon Koi, it's worth asking if these studios were even set up to succeed in the first place. The broader implications for Sony's portfolio are striking. In chasing live service success, they have spread themselves thin without establishing a single live service hit to the date. Obviously, we cannot count Helldivers 2 in this. As if the situation couldn't have been more frustrating, no one in Sony's leadership is facing any visible accountability for these repeated miscalculations. Instead, it's the studio and the teams, the people building the games, that are paying these sorts of prices. Whilst Holst Memo stresses that these decisions were made after careful consideration, the reality is that these closures reflect a series of poor strategic moves by the leadership. 
Sony's focus on live service games, which diverges from its traditional single-player and narrative-driven strength, has led to significant financial losses and left players with a generation's worth of remakes and cross-gen titles. Meanwhile, as these live service experiments have floundered, Sony's established franchises like Horizon and Spider-Man continue to be fan favorites, delivering quality content and driving strong sales. Ironically, NCSoft is currently working on Horizon Mobile MMO, yet another attempt to move into the live service, but without much evidence of learning from the past mistakes. If Sony's priority growth area remains mobile games as their claim, they will need to approach this market with more awareness of what their player base actually values. In the memo to the staff, Holtz emphasized that Sony aims to make smart decisions to enhance the organization and build resilience for the future. But with a string of live service flops and talent in studios forced to shut down, one has to wonder whether this focus is helping or harming the company. The promise of unforgettable entertainment experiences doesn't align with series of games that fail to make any real impact. Sony's intent to explore new revenue streams and expand beyond single-player games isn't inherently flawed. As we have seen, live service games aren't a guaranteed path to success, especially if their lack of core qualities that people look forward to in a PlayStation title. The PvP shooter genre is particularly challenging for any new IP, and even more so for the studio without proven track record in that space. Ultimately, if Sony wants to find success outside of its single-player offerings, it needs to invest in concept that resonates with its established audience instead of chasing trends that ultimately don't align with PlayStation's brand. In the end, this decision to close Firewalk and Neon Koi may be framed as necessary step to strengthen the organization as they say, but it represents a painful lesson for Sony and a costly mistake for all involved. As for the players, they've been left with the same message echoed by fans across multiple platforms. Bring back what makes PlayStation great. With each failed attempt at the live service title, that message only gets louder. Thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe. See you guys all and have a wonderful day.